I'm getting smart this time. Today, I'm gonna attempt to make a dress that I saw on Pinterest a while ago, and I saved it on one of my Pinterest boards because I was like, this is an adorable dress. I want to save it for later, but then I forgot about it. I recently went through a whole bunch of my old Pinterest boards and I saw it again and I was like, I think I have fabric for that. Fabric that's like close enough to what they actually used and it's totally in my wheelhouse, but it's a little challenging. And so I was like, let's just make it. Let's make this dress. We're making a dress. This is the dress. And it's kind of the cutest thing I've ever seen. So embracing pink this year. In this house, we craft in pajamas. I don't want to keep you waiting, so let's get to it. A while ago, I had a small semi-serious addiction to buying fabrics, whether that be online, from a fabric store, a lot of them are thrifted, like this right here. That's a thrifted curtain and I can't wait to turn it into something, but that's not today's project, no. Today's project is right there. My thought is, okay, so I have this fuchsia chiffon and this like semi-fuchsia pink fabric. I think we all know where this came from insert picture of Lupa dress here. And I realized that the fabrics are not the same color as the actual dress. They are way more vibrant and it's like a completely different color of pink, but it's what I have and I think it'll work just fine. And I'm getting smart this time. I already have my thread picked out. I'm gonna load up a couple of bobbins and I'm changing the color on my serger before I get going. That way I completely avoid the, I'll just use this black on white instead because it'll work just fine. No, it doesn't work just fine. I have the color of thread. I, I mean, it's close enough. It'll, it'll, it'll make sense, it'll work. And I'm gonna load it all beforehand so I don't have to keep stopping and loading more thread. It's freaking genius. And why don't I do this every single time? Because I'm lazy, that's why. Inside, very lazy, but not this time. No, not this time. I feel good about it this time and I'm just gonna go and do it. You know, normally I would say this really is a good plan, but I absolutely failed to account for the fact that the thread that matches my fabric perfectly um, and would have been great for top stitching details was almost gone and I foolishly used it as bobbin thread like an idiot. But changing out the serger thread worked perfectly, so I guess there's the balance here. This old McCall's pattern out from my pattern stash and decided it was like close enough to what I kind of wanted to do for this dress. I bought this McCall's pattern back when I was like maybe 15 because I thought that I was gonna win this prom dress challenge and I was like this is the pattern to use. Um, I absolutely did not win the challenge. I didn't even finish my dress. Didn't even come close to finishing. And I'm still using random objects as paperweights to weight down my fabric when I cut things out so clearly no learning has really even taken place since the day I bought the pattern originally. I think now is also a good time to mention that I'm only using the top portion of the pattern just for like the bodice area that kind of covers your boobies. I'm not using the skirt pattern because I want a completely different shape for the bottom of my skirt. So that's just kind of a side note. After I finished sewing the bodice and bodice lining together, I kind of took an account of just exactly how much chiffon I have. And then if I'm being honest, I absolutely just hacked off a giant rectangle and then ironed the demons out of it and started pleating it. There are many, 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 many ways ways to make pleats and this is just the method that I went with because in my brain at the time it seemed like it would work and honestly look at this it's mesmerizing these pleats like are not perfect but they'll totally do the job and I just ironed them down and pressed them until they were like nice and crispy because I like my pleats like I like my chicken crispy but then I was like oh shoot I have to move these pleats from my ironing board to my sewing table so I just taped them down with like some scotch tape and then I slid this ruler underneath them like I was scooping up a pizza out of a stone brick oven and then because I was like I have to sew these pleats down next I just added more tape to them to secure it down and this is just like gift wrapping tape so it's not gonna leave like a sticky residue or anything and I just zoomed it straight through my sewing machine and it worked. I got to this point and I realized that what I have going isn't going to work the way I originally had planned and I started feeling kind of frustrated and demotivated and I was like maybe I just won't make this project at all I'll just do something else so I made a pizza wrap to clear my mind, and after cooking the pizza wrap, I know what I'm gonna do. I don't know in what world this straight, flat piece of fabric was gonna mold over this curvy, curvy fabric, 
but it's not this world. And so what I'm thinking just to save this and to save time for myself is I'm just gonna unpick these panels and then like cut them out of this fabric with the pleats and everything and then just stitch them all together and call it good. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to look nice in the end. And if it looks like trash, that's on me and I'm okay with that for the most part. Now, don't you worry. I am no stranger to unpicking all of my hard work. And luckily this time I only had to unpick a few seams and it wasn't like I was unpicking an entire project because I've also had to do that before and it totally sucks. Anyways, back to the project at hand. At first I was a little bit worried that I wasn't going to be able to fit all of the pieces onto this small piece of pleated fabric, but yet again I got super lucky and was able to fit all of the front pieces onto the pleated fabric. I wasn't able to get any of the back pieces out, so I'll just cover them in like regular chiffon. They don't need to be pleated and I'm okay with that. Once I pinned all the pieces to the pleated fabric, I cut them out and sewed around the perimeter of each piece, making sure that the pleats didn't fold over in any weird or undesirable ways. And kind of like I said earlier, I didn't have enough pleated fabric for the back piece, so I just covered it in just regular chiffon. There's no pleats on the back part of the bodice. And finally, once all of that was done, I pinned all of the pieces together and reassembled the bodice. This side over here. I've sewn the pleats down, and it looks so much better than like this other side. Like it's just kind of bulky on that side. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew all the pleats down and um, hopefully that will help with this. When I tried the bodice on, I just noticed a lot of weird gaping where the pleats kind of are. So I wanted to make sure that they were secured down and weren't going to like open up a little bit because that gave the bodice a really weird and ugly look. And sewing them down took an extra hour out of my time, but it was totally worth it because now everything lays the way I want it to lay. And so with that done, I moved on to attaching the inside lining layer to the outside fashion layer. Again, just being super careful not to catch any of the pleats and accidentally sew them down in a weird way. The original dress closes in the back with a zipper, but I wanted to do a lace-up back just so that it was a little bit more size inclusive, which basically means that I have to sand down the zip ties that I use for boning. I have since gotten a rotary sander, so I don't do this by hand anymore, and thank the craft gods for that because I hate sanding zip ties by hand. Luckily enough for me, this bodice only has a few channels, which means I only have to do a few zip ties, and then I can move on to the next part, which is deciding how I want to do the lining skirt. And I decided to just keep it as simple as possible. I left it as a gigantic rectangle. I cut it down to the hem length that I actually wanted it, hemmed the bottom of it, and then ironed the absolute crap out of it. No more demons in these fabrics. And then just to keep everything uniform and streamlined, I did the exact same thing for the chiffon layer. The like satiny silk layer goes on the inside and the chiffon layer is for the outside. And I made them both pretty much the exact same length. Well, as close as I could get them anyways. And then I don't know why, but this is a really slow, why did I do this in slow motion? There we go, that's better. Day two, less hair, no eyelashes, same pajamas. And I promised myself that I would wash this pile of thrifted fabrics like a week ago and I can't handle the pile being here any longer. So I made it my goal to start this pile before I started sewing the dress again in hopes that I would actually do the pile of laundry and it's working. Like, look, here I go. And that's what I call accountability. I don't really know if that fits. I don't know if it actually is accountability, but I am 100% washing the pile right now. If you are not washing your thrifted fabrics, I'm telling you right now, you gotta wash them because you don't know where they've been. You don't know who had them before you. You don't know like who stepped on it, you know, got it messy or gross or dirty or who left old food on it. This is my Hobbit cosplay and I made the vest out of a thrifted tablecloth that I didn't wash before I used and halfway through the project, I noticed that there was dried crusty food on one of the main panels of the vest. I cleaned it off, but I should have just tossed it in the washing machine before cutting it up. Lesson learned. This is where I left off yesterday. I sewed the pleats into this skirt and next, I need to pleat this skirt and layer it on top and then I can attach the two pieces. I think the best way to pleat a lot of fabric down is to actually do the math, but do you know what I'm not gonna do? The math. I would rather jump out in the snow wearing a bathing suit because I just can't freaking stand it when I have to sit there and calculate everything. I just want it to like flow and be easy. And if I have to make a few small adjustments here and there, I'll make the adjustments. And look at this, it's just fine. Like it's not perfect, but I don't feel like it has to be perfect. I feel like it just needs to be like relatively nice. That will definitely bite me in the butt later on. Not this day, not tomorrow, but much later on, like if I ever wanna make an actual really nice garment, but today's not that day. 
Once I got both skirts situated and then sewed together, I attached the skirts to the bodice, right sides together, and then just zipped it through my sewing machine. I'm about to put the grommets on the back of the bodice, and usually I use my plier set to punch a hole and then punch the grommet in, and every time I do that, people in the comments, more so on Instagram than here on YouTube, but they come for me. They're like, girl, that's not how you're supposed to do it. You're doing it wrong. Don't punch a hole in it. And I'm like, you know what? It works though. I finally caved and I bought them all for grommet purposes. And I'm excited. I still will use these because I have them and they're versatile. But this time around, we're punching holes with this bad boy. It has like this gross texture on the handle here. I'm gonna try to not think about it too much because it's, yeah, it's gross. And then this is the little end. I couldn't get it off with just my fingers. I'm hoping like, oh, okay, that worked. Yeah, that's pretty pointy. That's a sharp little stick right there. Another really cool tool that I bought recently is this little measuring thingy. I'm sure there's an official name for it, but I don't really know what it is. Anyways, I started jabbing the holes through the fabric with the awl, and you know what I found? The awl is too small for my grommets. So I ended up just punching holes through it anyways. Points for trying. Anyways, I put a little bit of glue in between the fabric and the grommet and I just pressed them together with my pliers. And then once that was done, I moved on to making the shoulder straps. And in an effort to make this one dress a little bit more size inclusive, I decided to just do like spaghetti straps that could tie at the shoulders. That way if I needed to adjust it or if I had a friend that wanted to wear the dress, it would be a little bit more adjustable than just like sewn in straps. And finally we have the base dress. The skirt is ready, the bodice is ready, the straps are sewn on, and it's time to move on to making the bows. I don't have a ton of chiffon left, so I have to be really strategic with how I use it, because I need approximately 30 bows, I think. Probably I need more, but I'm only gonna make like 30 to 40 bows. And you know, now that I'm sitting here editing this video, something that would have actually helped me along this process was to count the amount of bows that are on the original dress. I have no idea. I have no idea how many small, medium, large, none of it. I just kind of guessed. And you know, maybe now is a good time to bring up the fact that I don't necessarily consider any of these videos to be tutorials. If someone watches a video that I make and they learn something, that's on them. I did not teach them anything because this is literally just my chaos process and me doing my best. And I film it because I enjoy filming it and I enjoy editing the videos. And because now that my sister and I don't live together anymore and we don't craft together every single day, she can watch my videos while she's crafting and maybe not feel so alone. Not that she's lonely, I'm sure she's fine, but actually, you know what? I just made a realization. I think I'm the one that's lonely crafting alone. Katie, if you're watching this, please come craft at my house. I'm lonely. And I miss your good ideas and sharp wit. <clears throat> well, that got personal. Let's not do that again. I made a ton of bows, like so many bows. I just did like the square method where you kind of pleat it together and then wrap thread around it because I was feeling like I was being a little bit lazy and I was embracing the laziness. There's nothing wrong with that because I still got it done. Look how many bows I have. And finally, after many, many, many hours of constructing variously sized bows, it was time for my favorite part of the entire process, which is pretty much just deciding where the bows go. I get to stick them in with little pins and look at it and zoom the camera in really, really slow and wear my pajamas really comfortably. Like this is a really good time until I realized I don't have nearly enough bows and I haven't even started constructing the gigantic bows that go on the very very bottom of the skirt. And in addition to all of that, I am definitely starting to run out of chiffon because these bigger bows that go on the very bottom of the hem of the skirt are massive and they take a lot of fabric and because they're so big I felt like I couldn't just wrap thread around the middle section of it and call it good. I felt like I needed to put more fabric around the middle of the bow so that's what I started doing. And once I got to this point I made a crucial realization and there's no going back, so you can say this is the wrong way all you want, but it's done. I think the bows are made out of organza. I don't think the bows in the original dress are made out of chiffon, because the chiffon just kind of sags. It's kind of heavy and doesn't really have a whole lot of structure to it. Personally, I think the chiffon looks fine. I like the way that I did the dress, but if I was gonna do it again, I would order satin for the inner layer, chiffon for the outer layer, and organza for the bows, all in the same exact colors. Plus like obviously some sort of cotton for the lining, but I feel like that's besides the point. 
Honestly, what I would have loved to do is just order the dress from the website because it is beautiful and spectacular and my recreation of it is not exact. It's a little bit different. It varies. I feel like the idea is definitely solid. It's totally there, but the execution is definitely through my point of view. And let's just go ahead and call that what it is. It is a very limited point of view because I definitely feel like I'm still learning and growing as a seamstress and designer. With all of that being said, I would also like to just mention that the very second summertime rolls around in my neighborhood, I will be putting this dress on and frolicking through a field full of flowers because it is perfect for that kind of a thing. Also, I might be hosting a picnic and if you live in my area, you're invited. Feel free to bring a snack for everyone to enjoy. When I first started this dress, I definitely planned on hand sewing each one of these bows on individually. And I was like, it'll be great. I'll watch a movie while I do it. It won't take that long. And then um, I got to this point and I spied my glue gun over on the table and I was like, do I just commit the cardinal sin and glue them on? And the answer is yes. Yes, I do. Because I just can't be bothered to stitch them on by hand right now or ever because, well, because I just freaking don't want to. I want to do it faster. I want it to be done. It's fine. It's gonna look fine as long as I'm really, really, really careful and pull all the little glue strings off. It's fine. <laughs> you know what I have to say about that? It is fine. If you just use glue, I don't care. Go ahead and do it. Obviously, hand sewing is always gonna be cleaner, but glue is faster. And honestly, if you're careful, it doesn't really even matter. And I think I stand by that. This is cute. I seriously cannot wait for summer because it's just right around the corner. I'm so tired of the winter weather. I'm tired of it being snowy and freezing cold outside. As soon as it's warm, I am planning a picnic. Um, the dress code is wear pink. The food is eat pink and the drinks are drink pink. Like I'm already planning this. It's already happening up here. If you live in the Northern Utah area, um, comment down below or DM me or something. Maybe reach out on Instagram. You're invited to this picnic. If you're interested in wearing pink and having a fun outdoor time, just enjoying each other's company because I want to wear this dress to a little event. It's so cute. The back laced up so well and so easy, which I was surprised by because sometimes when I make dresses like this with patterns that I have never used before. It's a disaster, but not this time. It's just adorable, the bows. Honestly, I feel like I could add a few more bows onto this. There's a few areas that I think kind of are a little bit barren, but for the most part, I'm in love with this. We went to the cutest little local cafe to take pictures and they have all these different walls, a wall covered in flowers and a wall covered in greenery and then a big gigantic mirror. And it was just really, really adorable, which is great because if I go outside now to take pictures, it's all snow, just, just so much snow, snow everywhere, snow on the trees, snow on the road. Everything is just kind of dead and snowy, which is really great for some backgrounds, but I wanted something a little bit more fun and a little bit more warm because I am desperate for some warm weather. I am totally living in my pink era and next up is this one. So you have that to look forward to. It's so cute. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please feel free to like and subscribe. More videos are on their way soon. And in this house, we craft in pajamas. Now it's gone. Hi. <laughs>